Hey guys, thanks for joining me in another video. Uh, I'm going to cover today uh, something I haven't heard anybody talk about, which is this gentleman here, Mr. Sun Ung, finally getting some ivermectin and it clearing him of his COVID, which is something his hospital didn't want him to do. Okay, now let's get into this. So basically, Mr. Sun Ung fully recovered after receiving ivermectin. But the hospital he was in did not want to give him this. Okay, so let me go down and read some of this. So <clears throat> here we have, so there's two things I want to cover here. One, there is a form of ivermectin that people can take that helps them with things, right? So it's not horse tranquilizer. It's, hu you know, it, it's human um, treatment, okay? So here it says, ivermectin tablets have been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to treat humans with intestinal strongly, <laughs> let's see if I can do this, strongloidiasis and ochiochoriasis, two conditions caused by parasitic worms. Okay, some topical worms, some topical forms of ivermectin have been approved to treat external parasites such as head lice and foreskin conditions such as rosacea. The drug is also approved for use on animals. So anytime somebody tries to tell you, you know, well, that's horse tranquilizer, or that's a horse dewormer or whatever, we take it for deworming also. Now, why it works here, we don't know yet, but it does seem to. All right, so remdesivir has been, uh oh, I lost it. Okay, has been given emergency use authorization by the FDA for treating certain categories of human patients that have been hospitalized with COVID-19. But the use of ivermectin to treat humans suffering from COVID-19 has become controversial because the FDA hasn't approved its so-called off-label use to treat the disease, which is caused by the CCP virus, also known as SARS-CoV-2, right? Or SARS-CoV-2. So basically, this guy's almost dead. He came in, he's 71, he's visiting to celebrate his granddaughter's first birthday came ill with COVID-19 and was close to death. They would not give him that because it's not indicated, right? <clears throat> so they were sued. His child, Man Kwan Ung, who holds a doctoral degree in mechanical engineering, did her own research and decided that her father should take ivermectin. So here we go. They went to court and the court said, yes, you can give it to him. The hospital refused. The hospital resisted the order on November 6th and 7th, denying Bain access to his patient. So the doctor was going to give it to him. They said no. Okay, the daughter's attorney filed an emergency report with the court. And, you know, the, the judge admonished the hospital and restated that it must allow Bain inside over a period of 15 days to do his job. When the hospital filed a motion to stay the order, Fulton denied it against directing the facility. And no denied it, again directing the facility to comply. Okay, so here is, and here's, so my husband sent this to me. This is from the Epoch Times or Epoch or however you want to say it. Most people don't believe that this is a legitimate news source. So I went looking for something that would show me that this actually happened. And here is the order. D9. Okay, so here is the actual paperwork in the circuit court, the 18th Judicial Court, filed so that he can do so. And he it says right here, court orders Edward Hospital to immediately grant Dr. Allen Bain emergency temporary privileges to Edward Hospital for the sole purpose of administering ivermectin to Mr. Sun Ong as outlined in the prescription. Submitted to the court and attached here to is the order as Exhibit B. So this is the official court paperwork showing that this happened okay that this is something that did actually here's the judge sign here's all that stuff okay so even though the maybe <laughs> the epic times you know whatever you believe in it we have actual court documentation that shows that this did happen and he's now alive mr Ong, because he took it this is just another one more thing in the in the chink i guess you could say in the armor another chink in the armor of the of the 
whole thing that they're trying to always say of, you know, we know what's best for you. You do what we tell you to, you take the medicine, we approve, you do that, right? And oftentimes you will know, you will understand, you will do your own research and go out and do this and want to take a medication and they will tell you no. This hospital went as far as to fight them in court to not allow this man to take a medication that he wanted to take, that his daughter suggested, nothing else was working, hey, let's take it. Because let's, let's, let's just be honest here, if it didn't work, he's dead either way. So why not let him take it? Why would the hospital fight that hard to not allow someone else in to administer a thing to him that he wanted? I just don't get it. Maybe if you work in a hospital, you can tell me. Maybe if you're part of the medical system, you can tell me why a patient's medical desires would be uh, eliminated, basically, because they want to take something that they may consider experimental but might work. Okay? This is something I will never understand. You know, I, this, I am very pro. You get to decide what kind of medical care you have, if any. You get to decide. I mean, we, as a as people, as human beings, understand that we get to decide when we don't want any more health care, we don't want any more, we're just ready to go. But for some reason, when it comes to ready, getting ready to save ourselves, and in this situation anyway, when it's ready to save ourselves, we're being blocked from taking medication that works. We're being, you know, if you take it, the news is saying, well, you're taking, you know, animal stuff animal medication you're not taking human medication that's that's terrible it's wacky it's all this this stuff works for some people guys you shouldn't be told no not when not after you've done everything else that they wanted you to do especially not then i think i think if you didn't want to do you know i'm very much you need to have control over your own medical stuff. It's not, the doctor doesn't always know what's right for you. The doctor doesn't always know everything that you, you can do. Okay. You don't always know. Let's just be honest. I don't know. I just found out that I was allergic to a certain kind of antibiotics because typically I don't take them and I took them and boom, I'm allergic. But I didn't know that until I took it. So somebody tell me I can't take it. I never would have known. In this case, if he told me, in this case, if he was, if the hospital won and he would have not have been allowed to take ivermectin, then he, the likelihood was he would be dead and he, and we never would have known it would have worked. I just think it's ridiculous. You have to sue these people. This is why people don't go to the doctor. This is why people don't go to the hospital until it's almost too late because you, you doctors don't listen. Hospitals fight you on care that you want to take after, even after you go through all of their hoops. If hospitals and doctors didn't do that and they worked with you instead and they understood that everybody is different, everybody chemically is different. Like it's, this is not even, Scientifically, we're all different. We all have just a little tweak here and there that makes us different to everything, which means we're going to have allergies to things. We're going to, some things are not going to work. You can't just start us on this blast of stuff and go from there. I mean, I don't know. It should be obvious to anybody who's had any work in this field that the patient and the doctor should work together. And the patient ultimately should have the choice of what they take and what they don't. And that was obvious and it was something that we always did and all this stuff before this. But now they've, they found a way to take a disease, make everybody scared of it, and start wiping out all different kinds of rights that people had, all different kinds of choice that people had. They had people convinced that if they just did what they said, they could go back to normal. That's never true. Anytime the government says, just do what I say, and you can go back to normal, it is not true. Do not ever believe it. That's what Germany said. Just do what we say. Get rid of the Jews. Get rid of this. And you, you can live a normal, happy life. No. This government has said, just wear your mask. Just do this. And then you can go back to normal. 
They said there's never going to be the same normal. This is the new normal now where you have to wear masks. No, 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 no. Okay. You have to make your stand. You don't have to be a jerk per se, but sometimes you have to sue a hospital. And sometimes you just have to tell your employer, no, I'm not going to take the jab. I won't wear the mask the way you want me to. Sometimes it's, it means you sacrifice a job or something like that. Lots of people have. Lots of people have left because this is just another little piece of the tyranny that they want. Another little piece of the control that they want in your life. They want so much control that they can tell you what to do with everything. And I'm so tired and sick of it. Anyways, thanks for joining me in this video. <laughs> If you liked it, share, tell everybody about it. If you didn't, let me know how dumb I am in the comments. And remember to pray and read your Bible, guys, because even though all this is happening, God's got us. So until next time, I'll see you later.